and Gukesh responds with knight to f6, c4 played here and now e6 is what Gukesh generally plays. He doesn't like to fianchetto, so he keeps, he sticks to it, he plays e6 and Nichat is ready for the Nimzo Indian defense. He puts his knight on c3 and tells Gukesh, I'm okay for it and Gukesh does oblige. He goes bishop b4 and queen c2, the classical variation. One of the most solid lines against the Nimzo Indian. And Gukesh comes up with the new idea, h6. This is not a very common move in this position. There are so many moves that black does. d5, c5, b6, castles. But h6 is not one of them. And Nijat now thinks for 3 minutes and brings his knight out to f3. Gukesh is well prepared. He strikes in the center with c5. And now... Nijat takes and one of the things if you will notice is in black's favor very slightly is the fact that this knight is already developed on f3 if it was not then after knight c5 knight e4 basically you could put your pawn on f3 to limit those uh, knights from c5 and f6 for now Gukesh takes and by the way this bishop will be very well placed on the long diagonal that is not a problem for Nijat he puts the bishop there and I think it's important for Gukesh now to take some advantage of the fact that this knight is pinned and he does go knight c e4 he attacks the knight on c3 castle happens knight takes knight pawn takes a knight and now bishop will drop back and what could be more logical than bishop c5 and now Nijat is going to push his pawn in the center of the board he pushes it to e4 you can see that he wants to gain more space in the center with e5 and Gukesh plays this very interesting move knight h7 he's well prepared he wants to maybe bring his knight out to g5 Nijat pushes his pawn to e5 very interesting of course here if you go knight g5 there's already knight d4 and white is pushing so that's the reason why Gukesh still in his prep plays rook b8 and now the knight comes to d2 the knight wants to come to e4 hitting the bishop and also looking at the d6 square very quickly pawn comes up to b6 knight jumps to e4 this is a very very good square for the knight Nijat has actually played well in the opening although he's taken a lot of time on the clock he's doing very well bishop b7 played Gukesh has 1 hour 57 minutes while Nijat is down to 1 hour 27 minutes so 30 minutes time lead for Gukesh and now he plays his pawn up to h4 queen comes to c7 now the, with the pawn on h4 it was basically to stop maybe the knight from coming out queen comes to c7 and nijat now plays his rook to d1 Gukesh chops off the knight very interesting and if you take with the bishop there's the move f5 because if opa saw queen takes g3 is just killing so that's the reason why nijat takes with the queen and that's a better move here and Gukesh castles it out so you can see that black has castled but white has more space has the bishop pair rook goes to d8 Gukesh has the better pawn structure it's a very imbalanced position and Nijat has to try and make use of his imbalances while Gukesh will make use of his. Rook goes to d2. There was also a possibility to play bishop f1 to d3, rerouting the bishop, but rook d2. And now knight goes back to f8. And Nijat is thinking here. He goes h5. Important move here. Because now the knight cannot come to g6 and the only way to activate the knight is back via h7. Pawn comes to b5. 
and this move is slightly weird because you are undoubling the pawns but at the same time when you are low on space you need those open lines for your pieces and b5 just does that it gets some breathing space for the black pieces the rook can now join in and the b file has opened up nijar plays bishop f1 attacking the rook and gukesh goes with his rook back white plays the other rook to d1 and gukesh brings his rook to b8 I like how the knight on f8 in a very minimalistic way not only defends here but also the king and Gukesh a4 played here by Nijat. This pawn on a4 maybe he wants to put his bishop on b5 that could be an idea but Gukesh enters with rook b3 attacking the pawn on c3 it is defended by rook to d3. The position is around even but now rook a3 you can see Gukesh turning on the heat here. Rook f3 played by Nijat. Some attacking chances on the king side. Queen c6 offering a trade of queens and Nijat takes it instantly. Takes Gukesh takes back. How do you defend this pawn on a4? It's almost impossible to do that. So Nijat gets the rook on the in the center but i think now gukesh can safely chop off the pawn so he's pawn up he's doing well but nijat has the bishop pair and i think this move bishop g2 shows that it's not so easy to defend this pawn if you go rook c8 maybe later i'll go rook d8 and this pawn is still weak so he goes rook a2 and his idea is that if you take uh, here then I'm attacking your f2 pawn so Nijat brings his rook up and offers it for trade it's important that Gukesh keeps the rooks on the board maybe rook a1 check or rook b1 but he exchanges and this is not a great idea because now after the trade of rooks the c6 pawn is seriously weak how do you defend it Gukesh plays rook c8 in a way, yes, he's defended it, but don't you think the position is a bit passive of the rook? Bishop e4, I really like this move because now this bishop can be rerouted to c2 to a4. With that, he blocks the a pawn and also keeps an eye on the c6 pawn. a5 played, bishop comes back to c2. And Gukesh now pushes his pawn to g5. Nijat quickly takes en passant. And Gukesh takes back. Now the easiest way for white to play is to take, take and take this pawn. Or even go rook a2 and the position is around equal. But instead Nijat goes king g2 allowing king g7. And now taking might not be the best because then king takes would happen. So goes bishop a4 putting pressure on the c6 pawn. Let's see how Gukesh reacts to it. He goes knight e7. I like this move. The knight defends the pawn on c6. Can come to d5 square also if needed. Pawn to c4. Stopping knight d5 ideas. How does Gukesh continue? Gukesh goes rook b8. He takes the open file for his rook. He's doing nothing spectacular, but he's just making one good move after another. That's the main thing for Gukesh here. To keep putting pressure on Nijat, bring him down on time. When he's down to 2 minutes 30 seconds, he's bound to make a mistake. Now the king comes up on f3 and rook d8 played here. So bishop comes back to e3. So step by step. Now black can improve the position with the rook moving in rook d3 fantastic move played here by gukesh the rook enters he gets up from the board he knows that he's better 30 minutes have been added on the clock to both the players king to e2 and gukesh has to attack this pawn here on c3 on c4 by rook c3 and i think 
it is natural yes he plays rook c3 fantastic move here because now to defend this pawn is not easy he goes c5 is he giving up material because if you take here he wants to play bishop d2 and win this so Gukesh need not hurry he goes knight d5 now finally getting that important square for the knight rook c2 played because if you take bishop takes here then there is a check and i give next check and i pick up the rook so that's the reason why rook c2 he takes bishop takes now you have the bishop pair but black has extra material and pushes the pawn forward fantastic move you can't take once again knight c3 check and you lose the bishop so nijata basov has his hands tied here king d3 gukesh pushes the pawn to a3 step by step black's position keeps getting better bishop to b3 you can see that he can actually win material here with knight takes e3 uh, and then takes on c5 but he actually first improves the position of the king bishop comes up and king goes even further king comes to c4 but it's attacking nothing because the knight is very well solidly placed bishop e1 played if only the king could enter this way then black is completely winning king comes back to d3 just have to be careful not for the king to get checkmated king g4 played and now bishop d1 check so the king cannot come to f3 but i think the king can go to h3 no he goes king g5 but also king h3 was not a bad idea to come from here king g5 played and he goes back to b3 for gukesh to make inroads is not so simple here but king f5 is a nice move because with this now everything is tied up the bishop needs to protect a2 this pawn is attacked this pawn is attacked so nijat goes king c4 and black king comes in bishop d1 played because if you had given a check the king could have entered from f3 so that's the reason why bishop d1 and now pawn to a2 so he plays pawn a2 f3 played king goes back to f5 suddenly the g pawn is now hanging bishop takes g3 so he goes bishop c2 check king g5 and bishop b3 played here he wants to attack this pawn here on a2 gukesh quickly chops off the g pawn while nijat takes the a pawn now there's a new boss in town which is the h pawn and gukesh simply pushes it forward with h5 pawn is extremely strong here and you can see that gukesh looks so confident he knows he's completely winning here and nijat abasov has fought well but gukesh somehow step by step managed to outplay his opponent the biggest miss for nijat was to not take the knight on g6 and he shakes his hand of the opponent 